Hello, and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Reagan Dehaven of Syndigo. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity. And this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there, and to talk with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Reagan DeHaven, the Senior Vice President of Product at Syndigo. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest. But in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Reagan, hello and welcome. Thank you, Shannon. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, I'm so excited to meet you and hear your story. So tell me, you're the Senior Vice President of Product at Syndigo. So tell me what type of business is Syndigo? Syndigo is the industry's only solution that provides a continuous flow of data between brands and manufacturers and recipients or retailers of data. So everything from managing your own content through product information, all the way through that syndication experience where a brand will curate and optimize their content for online sales. Oh, that's very cool and very handy, I uh, presume. I have a bit of retail experience in my background, so I can think of 10 million ways to use that. Yes. <laughs> um, and so as the senior VP of product, what's your typical work week look like and, and how do you work with data in your job? So as you may no, there is no typical week. Um, but in my role, I span from everything from kind of the strategic side of product. So thinking about our product vision, keeping up to date with innovation and technology, um, as well as understanding all of our client needs and client interactions and their business processes, um, all the way down to the technical interactions of really bringing our product to life for all of our customers. So that's working with our engineering partners on product development um, and day-to-day -day, um, understanding of what's going on there. Um, also, a huge part of my job is just cross-functional collaboration with all of the different areas of the organization. Um, product is really the hub. So we work with all areas to understand, you know, the business needs from our customers, from our internal users, and really translate that into, you know, what our technology team can build within our product. Oh, very, very cool. Um, so tell me, uh, Reagan, you know, uh, so how do you use some of the data for your job? How, how do you use data? That's really interesting because I think that there are, are two pieces to that. Um, so we both have data points that we are collecting to build our roadmap. So this could be industry trends and understanding consumer behavior and how do we utilize what's important to an end consumer that drives sales for our customers. So mm -hmm. that's really important to know like, for when someone is shopping on an e-commerce site, what is leading them to buy a product? Is it that it is multiple feature benefit bullets or if there's videos on the site or more enhanced content like um, interactive tours, that type of data we collect and can use to really enhance the consumer experience. The other side of my job is around my customers. So the brands, manufacturers, retailers that are using my product. 
Mm -hmm. um, and we use data points such as like interaction or adoption of our product features um, in order to enhance that user experience within our platform. So data is, you know, an everyday thing for for my job and, you know, on all on all areas. I love that data within, uh, you know, when creating on a data management platform. Right. <laughs> yes, awesome. I use data for the end consumer as well yeah. for my own, my own success. <laughs> Don't we all? I, I think it's. I always laugh when, uh, when as a company, where you know when we're having the same pain points as our, our end users, right? Of you know, how do we manage our own data? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> it's so good, and what a great um, use of it. So. Tell me, so Reagan, it, it, when you were, say, six years old, is this what you wanted to be when you grew up? You know, it, it, was this the dream job? I don't <laughs> what know. What was the dream? <laughs> so as my kids would say, I was born in the 1900s. So um, I don't know that this job existed when I was six years old. Um, and six-year-old Reagan was a little bit all over the place. I remember growing up, I wanted to be an architect and I wanted to be a veterinarian at different points of my childhood. So didn't really translate into the, the grown-up or even, you know, college age um path that I chose <laughs> tell me about that so as you transition from you know into college you know what it what was it you, did you decide to focus on so and why mm -hmm. yep so I actually took the the business perspective um went to a liberal arts school so there wasn't a specific business program but I have a I have an economics major um, so kind of went into that realm, but with a focus, um, thinking about marketing. So that's really how I started my career. So with that e economics major, um, I, I kind of jumped right into right. a, a marketing realm. I didn't want to go into finance and this seemed like a natural flow, um, of where I wanted to, to, to kind of focus, um, my education. So did start off there, but when you think about marketing, there's a couple of different types there. Um, and I'm not a creative. So if you think about it, like I don't design things. Um, so where I really took that focus from kind of the business perspective was a strength in process and actually in data, which is an interesting way to start this. So I remember early in my career as a, a marketing analyst, I was pulling and designing reports based on the marketing materials we would put out for our clients um, and really understanding from what worked um, from the data perspective, where our creative team needed to focus their energy. Oh yeah, and that, I'm glad you pointed pointed that out. It, it's been a big lesson for me, I think, in, in more recent years, uh, especially as we build the company. Um, you know, that marketing doesn't mean just creative; that there is a lot of data in marketing. Right. <laughs> um, so that's that's fascinating. So okay, so tell me. So you take this um, path towards with an angle of marketing and business. So what did you do next? What was the first First job out of college? So it, it was the marketing analyst, but where I really grew that um, in my next job out of college, I was still in a marketing communications team, um, but we're really that focus um, on the process behind the communications. So for example, one of my big projects or initiatives was within a Fortune 100 company, getting all of the leaders aligned on approving different marketing materials, like the communication review process, understanding how the different materials that our marketing team was creating um, impacted different areas of the organization. So really dove deep into the like cross-functional collaboration um, side of the kind of marketing house. So that's, that's wow. where I took that. <laughs> wow. That's very fascinating. And, and, you know, I'm here as a lot of the data stories that I hear are that is this, you know, following of passion, which sounds like, like you were doing for sure. So where did you go next? 
So within that position, I had a really strong leader um, and mentor. Now, now that I look back at the time, it was my boss. Um, <laughs> so my leader in that position recognized that I wasn't a creative and saw the strengths that I had in understanding process and understand working with different areas of the organization to understand requirements, understand the needs um, of where we would direct our marketing resources. And even within a non-tech company, it was actually in the healthcare space, um, she led me to a path of, of program management, which was my first taste of, of product management because we didn't have SaaS products we were selling, we had programs we were selling. So uh, she, uh, you know, guided me into, you know, building on my strengths, guided me into what we would call product um, in a non-technology area. Oh, so that's very cool. Uh, I love that you, that you had a nice mentor in your, your boss that can make all the difference mm -hmm. in the well, world. Yeah. Because when you're when you're younger and in some of those roles, you don't even know what opportunities even exist. You really understand what your role is and how you may interact with your direct team or even across teams. But you don't always know, like, where does that take you? What other positions or what other passions could you develop out of other areas? So I I have, you know, having that mentor was really really important to my whole career path. Very, very nice. So what was next? So from there, I actually dipped my toe into technology. So mm -hmm. once I had that experience um, in the kind of program and managing products mm -hmm. that were, were programs, I did move into a more traditional, as we would we would think of it today, product development manager role. Mm -hmm. um, so still in the healthcare space, um, working for a, a health plan, um, but within their wellness arena. So I was really fortunate to be able to work on a product that was kind of the go-between between, between health coaches and nutritionists and end users that were trying to be healthier. So it helps people quit smoking or exercise more or eat better. So we, we had both a mobile app that I got to design and, and really work with engineering to refine and meet those end user needs, um, as well as a, a you know, web-based app. So as you transitioned into that role, how did you ramp up into it? What, you know, what uh, did you just say, I, I'm going to go, I'm going to go try this or, uh, you know, <laughs> this, this is some self-learning in there, you know, or do you just relied on other people to teach you? Well, um, a little bit of all of that, yeah. um, but it was really keeping up with, you know, the jobs that are out there. Once mm -hmm. I was working in the program management and we called it product, I was, yeah. I, you know, realized that there are the technology out there. Like you have the, you know, your own apps or programs that you use in everyday life. And I thought it was really intriguing. And so I kind of did my own research there. Um, and maybe a little fake it till you make it when you get the job. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then again, I, you know, I, I lend a lot of my development within that role, again, to strong leadership um, that I had and, and a, another really strong boss that understood and could map my prior experience to the needs that we had within, within that role. So I've I've been very fortunate to have you know really great leadership in my in my career to help me identify opportunities and play on my strengths um, to really grow. Oh, amazing! With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTalks for 20% off your purchase. Okay, so so now what? Now now you're a little more into the tech. So so now where are you going? So from there, you know, healthcare 
you only get so far when it comes to technology. There's a lot of red tape. There's a lot yeah. of red tape in, in yeah. healthcare technology. Sure. Um, so, you know, looking out and, and again, following industry trends, um, I had an opportunity to get into e-commerce. So where I am today is actually was um, what is now part of Syndigo. So this was in 2015. I joined one of the, the companies that Syndigo acquired called EdgeNet. Um, and really started within the product content realm that that I'm in today. Wow, that is amazing. I love your story. Again, it's, you know, I started this podcast because I know from just my years of working with the data management community that there's no linear path into <laughs> data <laughs> or data for building data products uh and it it's a it is a um, path of passion and and curiosity and just following um your heart more or less right uh uh so I love to hear this it's, it's a very it's a very unique story um uh so thank you for sharing so so tell me then um What's been your biggest lesson so far in your career through this journey? So many lessons. Um, but I guess I would say that I'm going to bring it back to data, but like experience and passion and gut feelings don't replace data points. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I say that because we, that, you know, being, especially with Syndigo for nine years now. Um, I have a lot that I already know about our products. I already know about our customers. I already know what the, the consumer needs, right? But I don't <laughs> because the industry and consumer behavior is, is ever changing. So, mm -hmm. you know, I take all of this experience and passion, but I still need to back up you know, all of that information or all of that gut feeling with data points and new data points and fresh data points in order to support that intuition. So I think that that, you know, when you're younger, it's, you know, I know this, I know everything and we should do yeah. what I have in my head. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> as I've learned over the years, you know, I probably am right in the end. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> but it's, you know, collecting the data yeah. based on our usage or based on our, our customers evolving business needs um, is always needed in order to justify the resources that you're going to need to continue to evolve the product and build out the roadmap. Oh my gosh, I just said this big aha moment. I think you're the first person who has said that, you know, the biggest lesson is to use data. Like, <laughs> I, I think that is so amazing. I, I had that, certainly had that experience myself. Um, uh, when I first started learning to use data in, early on in, in my career, that aha moment, right, where my intuition um, for, you know, the only time in my life, right. That it wasn't right. Um, <laughs> you know, no, and, and it is, it's so eye opening to see that data and go, Oh, well, it isn't what I thought it is so different. So I need to reframe my thinking and, and understand that, you know, my limited view of the world, uh, is different from what's actually happening. Right. Yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I just have to take a moment and laugh. It's, it's, it's such an awesome ah moment. <laughs> but um, so Reagan, tell me, you know, then having worked with data for a while and throughout your career, what is your definition of data? Well, um, I guess I would say, you know, data is obviously, you know, information or information points or facts. But I would, you know, elaborate on that to say information or facts used to make decisions. 
-hmm. So there's, there's so many data points out there. I mean, one of my favorite stats out there is that like 90% of the world's data has been generated in the last two years. And it's like continues to exponentially grow. And, you know, thinking of that, it's how do you parse through all of that data to get to what is meaningful and what is driving decision points? Indeed. Yeah. And that's an amazing statistic. And in fact, uh, as you say, you know, um, I'm going to date myself here and, and, you know, back to when a gig was so big. I believe they're making up new words to (laughs) to describe the amount of, you know, (laughs) Zeta bytes. that exist and are being <laughs> created all the time <laughs> indeed uh, so so tell me Reagan do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why so that's a that's a really interesting question and I I would say increasing, but maybe not in the way that you would traditionally think. Mm -hmm. So I think that why I say that is obviously the the number of jobs will align with this explosion of data that is being generated. However, Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, with the advancements in AI, that a lot of the traditional data analysis work that that we think of when we think of data will be replaced by mm-hmm. by AI. However, I don't foresee that the need for the evolution of data jobs to decrease. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, a human intervention will will still be needed and it's just we have to kind of wait and see exactly how those those roles shift um, with that kind of balance between the increase in data and the Mm -hmm. increase in utilization of AI. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Tech is always shifting the norms of all jobs, right? You know, but uh, Um, Yeah, I see data jobs, like you say, there's always going to need to be human intervention, whether it's managing the ethics of the data, managing Mm -hmm. the data going into the AI programs and all the data management needed um, for that uh, initiative, those initiatives um, are going to be very, Mm -hmm. very important. And And, uh, yeah, as you say, data is just growing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just as an example related directly to like what Syndigo does, like, you know, we are, we have our AI roadmap and we're exploring all of the ways that we can make, you know, AI integrated into our platform and really help the quality and efficiency and optimization for both our brand and, and retailer clients. But right now where the kind of maturity is, people still want to review it. So it may be that AI is helping Helping generate content, but there's a different like review step or want to customize content differently and interact with the AI. So I think there's a lot of opportunity there, even with how we're seeing the, the advancement of AI today, let alone five, 10 years from now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Or uh, the, even the unknown, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the unknown of what's to come, but <laughs> there's always a surprise around the corner when it comes to tech. <laughs> so, Reagan, what advice would you give then to people looking to get into a career in data management? That's an interesting one. I think that what I would say is balance like business and technology thoughts around data. Um, whereas I know, you know, traditionally you're like, I want to be a data analyst. I love data, but why do you love data? What problem are you trying to solve with data? And I would say maybe start with the business problem or start with the, the business that is interesting or that you're passionate about, and then work backwards from there to what, what kind of data internet data interactions that you you would have to kind of build that career. Oh, that's great advice. 
Um, because, I, and I do love that about data management, right? Because it can be a marriage of, of passions, right? You can, because every company, every industry globally uses data. So you can you can do lots of things and work you know and to to do uh, to to marry those passions of of supporting a, a company and industry that you believe in and then you know and then also while nurturing that passion for our data and right. which so oh very cool well Reagan I would be remiss if I didn't ask if somebody wanted to look up Syndigo's uh, products how would they uh, find Syndigo. You can find Syndigo at syndigo.com. Um, so that's going to be the best way. We have a catalog of solutions um, that are all on syndigo.com. And as well as you can find any upcoming events or webinars um, that we have going forward, um, as well as we have a strong LinkedIn presence. So look us up on LinkedIn and please follow us there. Yeah. Very nice. And I'll be sure to post those uh, those links on the podcast page as well for everybody. So, oh, well, Reagan, it's been so nice to meet you and, and chat with you. What a great story. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. This was great. Oh, thank you. And thanks to all of our listeners out there. And if you'd like to keep up to date in the latest podcast and the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time, stay curious, everyone. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe.